I've been in the industry far too long, probably about 30 years, believe it or not. Oh God, man. Um, Start again. It's a very, very long time. Hence why I'm very, very old. This is going to be the one that takes <laughs> Is that good? No. <laughs> Come on. So Nigel, tell me a bit about your time in financial services and some of the roles that you've done. Well, Rob, um, yes, it's good to be here today. Um, I've been in financial services a long time and I've seen an awful lot of change, really. Um, I started off um, a long, long time ago with Allied Dunbar, actually. Um, and then you don't see them, Rob? No, you don't really, but it... Um, it, uh, it's had good and sort of uh, bad press, to be fair, over the years, but it's done an awful lot for the financial services industry um, in terms of the progressiveness. I mean, people don't actually realise that Sir Mark Weinberg, who was the founder of Allied Dunbar, was the pioneer of unit-linked investment. So everything and all things investment-related can really stem back to... Uh, to, to that in, uh, in a lot of ways. Allied Dunbar became Zurich, um, and so I worked for, um, for Zurich a period, for a period of time, actually in the uh, unit trust division um, down in Swindon head office. So my background has always been sort of investment really from the mid 80s. Um, I did an advisory role with Zurich um, in the early um, sort of 90s. Um, before sort of um, becoming a broker consultant. So broker consultant basically meant that um, um, independent financial advisors, in other words, you and me, Rob, um, were effectively my clients. Yeah. And um, I was, if you like, the technician and um, the, uh, the designer of the solutions, the, the planning, if you like, that advisors sort of recommend and put forward with, with clients. So um, there's a lot of, um, lot of experience there that I can sort of draw on, um, um, leading up to me um, essentially becoming an independent financial advisor in my own right, um, some sort of six years or so ago. Um, and that's when and, we first uh, met and started working yeah, together. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah. I can't and, believe it's um, been that long, to be honest. No, it's absolutely sort of <laughs> flown by. Mm. And um, um, I think we've learned a lot. We've seen a lot of change. It's a very fluid sort of industry. Um, I think technology has played sort of a huge part yeah. in, um, in that, which actually is good for clients. Um, because it means that information is so much more accessible for them. On that point then, because we had a really good conversation yesterday, because one of the hot topics now in financial planning is cash flow modelling. So cash flow modelling is that tool, that technology we can use as financial advisors to plug a client's circumstances in, to make some assumptions and kick out a graph essentially to show what their income might look in retirement. How have you found that to be a useful tool in sort of your financial planning toolkit? I think it's been a fantastic um, sort of tool, Rob, really. And um, I think um, it brings to life um, pension planning for clients. I mean, let's face it, if we just talk about sort of pension planning, it's it's really a bit of a, um, a turn off in a lot of ways for a lot of clients. Um, there's always been a lot of jargon around sort of pensions, a lot of mystique. Yeah. There's so much paperwork. Um, clients just don't understand it. Um, the reality is all they should be interested in, and uh, me being a client, <coughs> excuse me, I would actually sort of really want to understand in my retirement, um, how, am I going to have enough income to sort of live on really? Yeah. Um, so I think the retirement modeling sort of software and those conversations that we can have with clients really helps clients to understand um, their retirement journey, really. So it's helping them think about um, when they want to retire, what sort of income they might need to retire on, 
what sort of income they might want to retire on? Those are different sort of questions, different sort of answers. Yeah, Yeah. and so it's actually looking at their pension planning, which they have in place. Um, And beyond that, because retirement planning these days has got so much more um, sophisticated, if you like, for want of a better word, in other words, People have got money tied up in their houses. Um, They perhaps have buy-to-let properties. They might receive inheritances. Um, They can do equity release, which is the new sort of big thing possibly going sort of forward. Um, And all of these things um, can release lumps of money. So the whole retirement planning looks very much like a jigsaw. Um, So it's trying to help clients understand all these bits of money that they can pull together um, and what that looks like as a retirement plan. Um, But I don't think it stops there. The other powerful thing, Rob, and the important thing about the retirement modeling software um, is it shows whether clients will run out of money or not. Um, Because that's a big risk, isn't it, in our job? You know, if we had a crystal ball and clients came with an expiration date to say that you were going to die at 80, it'd make our jobs really easy, wouldn't it, to know that we've got so long to plan for a client and then the money doesn't need to be there. But we don't have that benefit of hindsight, do we? We we have to plan as if they will be there tomorrow and the day after and the day after. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're, um, you're right, really. And um, you're right, we don't have a crystal ball. And we don't sort of know when we're going to sort of um, leave this, leave this earth. Um, but we have to make sort of assumptions, really, that um, that people are going to live typically if they're retiring around about the age of 60, 65, that they are going to sort of live into their 90s. Um, and we can show them making various sort of investment growth assumptions, whether what they have and all those bits and pieces that I talked about whether it's going to provide them with a sustainable income um, into retirement. Um, Now, that is the big unknown there as well, because obviously there are some investment assumptions that we actually make. Um, So while we can sort of put some sort of crash type scenarios in there to show if stock markets didn't perform in the way we expect, then this would have an effect on your... um, your capital, if you like, that you've got into retirement. Um, But hence the other reason why it's very, very important once we've got this plan in place, why we should review it with clients. I was gonna gonna ask you about that then, Nigel. So it's all very good setting up a pension and maybe having a pension review, which I'll, I'll touch on shortly, but let's focus on that then. So what do you think is the big benefits of having regular pension reviews with a client? I think the big thing really is um, um, the relationship that we want to create with clients is that we want them to to go away and enjoy their lives, have the income that they actually need day to day, have no sort of financial worries. Um, All of the the pension sort of planning, which we're sort of focusing on here today, um, that's our job really. So we take that sort of burden away from them. So it's really a 24-7 service that we can offer. Clients can ring us up, contact us at any time with any sort of questions, any queries. Um, If they want some more money, if they want a lump sum of money out to buy a new car or to actually pay for the son or the daughter's wedding, um, then those are the sort of services that we can can offer on, um, on call really. But the annual review is important because it gives us an opportunity to just check with clients their personal circumstances. Has anything sort of changed in terms of that income need, that income want that we talked about sort of going forward and their retirement goals? And then really in the wake of, um, I suppose, um, statements of their existing investments, really to check that the whole plan is still on track. So it's very, very important that clients don't have this plan and stick it in a drawer for the next 10, 20 years um, and run the risk then of potentially waking up one day and they've got no money left. It's very, very important to have that ongoing support and review from us. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. And 
Um, obviously, there's no guarantees in, in investment planning and most pensions, you know, the values go up and down, as you said, with the stock market returns. So it is key that the review you have is dynamic and reviews what's gone on and what's going to happen going forwards with the pension income. But looking at pension reviews then, so a new client comes to us, typically when they've got maybe three or four pension plans, which is really common now. I think the days of people leaving school and working with one employer for 40 years, then retiring, have long gone. Um, I had a client yesterday awesome. who had seven pension plans from seven different jobs. So when you have a client like that for the first time, what are some of the things you're looking at uh, and sort of why? Okay, I suppose um, what we're, we're going to look at there and um, help the client understand um, is the continued sort of suitability really of those um, pension plans, Rob. Um, I think clients generally um, don't like having a number of um, pension plans. It feels very bitty to them. It's yeah. an administration nightmare potentially. They don't understand one of these pensions, never mind three, four, five, yeah. six. And you get all these annual statements coming in from all these different providers. Absolutely. And um, the variance in those plans um, will be considerable um, for various sort of reasons. One is that the charging structures on the plans will be different. Some may be better, some may be not so good. You tend to find that older pension plans have more excessive charging on them. Um, one of the good things about the pension industry over, over the years is that there's been considerable downward pressure on charges being applied by pension providers. Um, so that's good really for clients. But if you've got a pension plan that's very old and it's got excessive sort of charging built in, you are literally sort of losing money um, just just because it's a very old sort of pension. Yeah. So one of the first things is to understand the charging structure on the pensions. Then secondly, it's looking at the funds that the clients are actually invested in and whether they are suitable. What I mean by that is um, everyone has an attitude to investment risk and um, an attitude to loss, an acceptance of loss. Yeah. And it's important to understand with the client um, what that um, attitude is really, because there may be a mismatch unknowingly. The funds that they're actually invested in um, are perhaps more aggressive. Um, they're um, more sort of um, risky. They're, they have more risk in terms of... Um, the, the risk that they're actually sort of And taking. they've got that capacity to lose more money. And it's something that we see a lot, isn't it? The suitability of the underlying funds not being suitable for the client's objectives, the client's risk. You know, the last thing we want is clients that can't sleep at night because they're worried about the risk that the pensions are taking. But it's something we do see a lot, isn't it, Nigel, on, on that side? Yes, no, absolutely. And let's be honest, Rob, there are, and as we know, there are um, poor performing funds and there are good performing funds yeah. out there. Um, yeah. And there's lots of horror stories with certain fund managers going bust, doing things wrong. So it's not just performance, is it? It's actually the fund management group, the pension provider. Are they secure? Are they financially stable? Are they competitive? So yeah, there's a whole host there, isn't it? Just, just in that space alone. Absolutely. So the benefit of the pension review is really to to look at all of these. Um, these these things, if you like, with all these different various sort of pensions, and for us to do a full sort of analysis um, of those pensions, and ultimately say to a client by way of a report, um, give them the thumbs up on some of these pensions, or whether say um, whether make a recommendation that they should and maybe consider consolidating yeah. um, some of these pensions and demonstrate the tangible sort of benefit to them of doing that, i.e. perhaps through lower charging structures, um, although past performance, as we say, is no guide to the future. Yeah. It's actually looking that, okay, on a like-for-like -like basis, if these funds do perform, we're putting you in a better place. Yeah. And it's, um, I think you hit the nail on the head there. There's got to be a reason why, hasn't there? 
we don't just transfer or move pensions for the sake of it or to earn ourselves a bit of money. There has to be the reason and the rationale for it, doesn't there? No, absolutely, um, Rob. That's that's very, very important. It's important um, that we demonstrate that to um, the client, really. And in the report, that um, is very clear. It's very sort of transparent. Um, and so what we're able to show is that the costs of actually um, taking up the advice are more than outweighed by the potential sort of benefit either through savings on charges or potential performance sort of gains. Because there are plenty of occasions where we'd recommend to leave a plan because it might have some sort of bonus or guarantee that's very valuable, such as the whole debate around defined benefit and final salary transfers at the moment. We're of the belief that it should stay where it is because it offers a very valuable guarantee. Clearly, there might be instances where clients could have a benefit to transfer, but it's a high risk strategy, isn't it? Which we take a lot of time to look at. Um, so that aside then, Nigel, so we looked at ongoing reviews, we've looked at um, what a pension review actually entails. What, um, what would you say to potential clients that are thinking, well, I don't need a financial advisor because we see it all the time. I'll go online, I'll, I'll invest online, I'll move my money myself. What would you say to those DIY investors, do you think? What are some of the risks in doing it yourself? I think the risks are um, the unknown, um, really, sort of, Rob. So um, you've got nothing to actually compare um, the online sort of um, product with. Mm. Um, the benefit of actually coming to us as an independent financial advisor is that we are truly independent. So we're able to research the market, we're able to sort of do, do due diligence on, on funds, on product providers, um, and ultimately tailor a solution to um, your specific needs as the client. Yeah. Um, you know, the analogy, um, and it, it can be the same, you know, shopping around for a mortgage, for example, if you just walk down the high street and you go into a particular bank or a particular building society, um, you know, you're going to, um, I'm sure, get their sort of best product um, and their best solution. But how do you know, compared to the rest of the marketplace, that that is the best that's out there? Yeah. Um, it might be good. It might not be good. Um, so the benefit of using, in that situation, a mortgage broker or if we're talking about pension planning and independent financial advisor, um, is is that really? Yeah, I think just to expand on that, I would say you're getting the experience as well. You've been in the industry since the 80s. You don't look it though, now, just don't worry. And you've still got more hair so than me. Kind. So kind, <laughs> but just a bit. We've got 100 years of combined experience in our team. We're regulated advisors. We've got professional indemnity insurance. So ultimately, what what me and you tell clients we're liable for. So if that's wrong, then clients can sue us. Sounds quite dramatic, but that is the point, isn't it? If you do it yourself, you've got no one to blame but yourself. So I think they're the other two key messages I would get across as well to DIY investors. Um, but thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you for your time this afternoon. It's great to learn a bit more about pensions and your role in the industry. Um, and thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Thank you too. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.